Hey guys, Sean here. Welcome to the F1 Word and to another news video. Yes, the rumour mill can finally calm down just a tad for now, as Renault have confirmed that Esteban Ocon will be racing for the team from 2020. Now the Frenchman has signed a two-year deal, which is interesting, but more on that later, and the team statement read as follows. Renault F1 team is pleased to confirm Esteban Ocon will join forces with Daniel Ricciardo from 2020. Esteban will join Renault F1 team on a multi-year contract. Cyril Abitbal later went on to confirm that's for two years. The Frenchman is well known to Renault and Enstone, having been Renault reserve driver in 2016 and also a Lotus Junior Program member. In the same statement on the website, Esteban Ocon stated, First and foremost, I am very proud to become a Renault driver. I have grown up at Enstone, starting with Lotus in 2010 and then with Renault. I am very attached to this team and everyone who works there. They are the ones who open the doors of top-level motorsport for me. Secondly, I am pleased that a team with big ambitions has entrusted me with the opportunity to once again demonstrate my skills at the highest level of F1. It is a responsibility I take very seriously. There was, by the way, a lot of talk about whether or not this was going to be a loan deal or whether it was going to be Mercedes releasing him. All I can say officially, if you like, at time of recording is that right now there is no news either way. But a two-year deal would hint at the fact that maybe it's not on loan. But again, that is purely speculation. If anything breaks on that between the video going up and later today, I will post a link to an article in the description and in the comments. So my first reaction when I read this story and everything that came with it wasn't one of total surprise, to be honest. I mean, as I said in the Bottas video, I was pretty confident two weeks ago that Ocon would be in a Merc. But the fact that the Renault rumour has been getting stronger over the last week or so has taken some of the surprise out of the announcement. But also, I have said more than a couple of times that Ocon or Bottas, whoever doesn't get that Merc seat, would end up in a Renault. I just really felt like Toto Wolff was tempted by a change in the lineup, hence why I put Ocon at Merc in my predictions and Bottas at Renault. On the move itself, from a Renault perspective, this is a pretty good call. Despite the fact he said that he was likely to stay for 2020, Hulkenberg hasn't really seemed all that happy or comfortable or settled or whatever. He just doesn't seem overly pleased at the moment. So it sort of feels like the right time to bring in a new driver. Ocon is also young. And as I always say, and we'll probably say again a few more times before the end of this video, he also has bags of potential. He is French as well, which is a big bonus. Now, as some of you have said previously, his nationality doesn't necessarily matter. And whilst I agree to a point in the sense that Renault will want the best available driver, if that best available driver also happens to be French, it's a win-win. A French driver in a French car is gold dust for them commercially. Looking at it from a Mercedes point of view, here's the thing. As I said earlier, I still personally think that Bottas has done enough. Perhaps more than enough to keep hold of that seat for one more year. Would I personally have liked to have seen a change at Mercedes? Yeah, that's nothing against Bottas. That is simply just my own curiosity. You know, that whole what could Ocon do versus Hamilton or can he put himself in a position to take the reins when Hamilton retires or leaves? Just pure curiosity. Plus, sometimes it is just nice to see a change. But again, nothing at all against Valtteri and I do think he deserves another season. I've said this so many times as well, but Ocon was always a gamble for Mercedes. He'd had, what, two and a bit seasons in F1 and absolutely showed the potential he has. So Merck were aware of that. But by the time he gets in that Renault next season, he won't have driven an F1 car in anger for a year. You may well disagree with me here, but throwing a youngster who hasn't raced for a year in a Mercedes which is challenging for titles or is expected to challenge for titles is a gamble. It doesn't matter what potential he's shown in the past, a full season out will likely have had an effect on him and it might take him a while to get up to speed. A year is a long time in F1 after all. And Mercedes cannot afford to potentially end up dropping points while Esteban finds his feet again, especially if Red Bull continue to progress the way they have this year into next season. Therefore, in my view, keeping things as they are whilst they wait for 2021, wait to see what Hamilton is going to do, and I guess even wait to see how well George Russell progresses, sticking with Bottas makes sense. As for Ocon though, well, it's a seat back in F1 and it's good to see that he will be given a chance again. Look, I'm not going to keep going over this. He may not have beaten Perez at Force India, but he was far more inexperienced than Checo. And in the end, he wasn't all that far off him. And without his DNFs in 2018, he could, and I'll say that word again, could have beaten him. Now, of course, that's all ifs and buts and we'll never know. But the point is, although he has a long way to go and a lot still to learn, he did do a good job in his first stint in the sport. And I will stand by what I said towards the end of last season as well. He absolutely deserved a 2019 seat more than some of those who are currently trundling around in that midfield. What it means for his long-term future though, I'm not so sure to be honest. But as I said at the start, I do find it interesting that he signed a two-year deal with Renault, yet Bottas has only signed a one-year deal and Hamilton's contract is also up at the end of next season. 
is this Mercedes putting all of their eggs in George Russell's basket? As in, have they now moved on from Ocon and George is the next in line to fill one of those seats? I mean, time will tell on that, but with both of their drivers out of contract at the end of 2020, and Ocon at Renault until at least the end of 2021, I just can't shake the feeling that his chances of a seat with the Silver Arrows is now even further away. Not that Merck couldn't buy him out of that contract or that there isn't a clause which allows him to be recalled to the team. I'm just pondering and speculating, really. I'll tell you what, though, it is going to be tough for him. Daniel Ricciardo is a very, very good driver and it will not be easy to beat him. Don't get me wrong, that's not really to be expected in 2020. His initial target for his first year with the team will just be to get his eye in again and get as close to Danny Rick as possible. I do not think for one second that Renault will be expecting him to rock up and smash the Aussie. It's more likely that they're just going to be looking for consistency. But I think he'll do okay. To summarise then, I think Renault have done some very good business here. As I said earlier, Hulkenberg doesn't seem all that happy. Maybe because he knew that this was coming, but he seemed a bit off for a while now. Ocon will be great commercially for the team as well and they've landed a quick young driver with plenty of room for development. For Merck, if he is loaned, which again right now I'm not 100% sure on, we can only speculate at this point really, although Mercedes have since put out a tweet in reply to that announcement by Renault, which simply says, look after him for us. I'm sure we'll find out more as the weekend goes on. But if he is on loan, they have the option to call him back if they need a driver at the end of next season. And Esteban gets a chance to get himself back up to speed to show everyone what he's got. So that's kind of win-win for Merck and they get to keep Bottas as well. Again, they know what he can do. And from Ocon's point of view, it's a race seat in F1. It's with a manufacturer as well. And as much as I'm sure he'd have loved to have landed Bottas' seat, this move is not a bad one for him at all especially when you consider the 2021 changes are on the horizon now, and that could mix the grid up. We could see Renault leap up towards the front of the grid, or of course, drop down it. You never know. I really do think that all parties involved, though, have got a very good deal out of this. That is it then for this video, but as always, there is a poll in the top right of the screen for you guys to vote on and to have your say. So, do you think Renault have made a good move by signing Esteban Ocon? And don't forget that you can, of course, let me know your thoughts on any of today's news down in the comment section. Now, I will be back soon with more content as ever, but in the meantime, don't forget that you can follow me over on social media and all of the links you need for that are in the description down below. But as ever, thank you for watching. I've been Sean. This has been the F1 Word and until next time, goodbye.